Who am I? I'm Prakhar. Hi. Uh, so I'm from India. I am a uh, like computer science student major, uh, and uh, final year undergrad. I'm currently doing research with uh, Triple IT Delhi in the field of uh, computer vision only. So I code solve problems and you can find me at prsr.me if you want. Uh, and then, so what is this talk about? This talk is uh, basically about uh, computer vision. So uh, do you know what computer vision is, any one of you? Uh, yeah, great. So, quite a show of hands. Uh, and uh, so, this would be uh, explaining the theoretical parts of uh, computer vision. I would be giving you codes so that you can run and uh, explore the code yourself. Uh, that would, uh, with like, understand everything yourself. Uh, so, uh, and everything would be hard coded in Python and NumPy. So, no, no libraries, no nothing. Uh, it, it would be hard coded in Python so that you can understand what I said and relate to the code itself. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, why, why did I choose this particular topic? So, because fundamentals of deep learning are very scarce. So, everybody is like using uh, some kind of library, Keras, TensorFlow, something like that. And they are like uh, just getting away with the theory. So uh, theoretical part is very important if you want to explore what a problem is and if you want to deliver a good solution to the problem. So people, yeah, so people usually don't understand this easily. And uh, this will really you help you to understand what computer vision really is. Uh, so uh, some quick show of hands. Uh, uh, how many of you are new to machine learning itself? Oh, I expected that. Great. So, uh, so anybody who is here to explore machine learning can uh, like tell me what machine learning is in their own words. Anyone wants to answer? No one. Okay. So, so a machine. Uh, what is machine learning? Machine learning. Uh, it's basically a machine is said to learn from experience E with respect to some class T. Uh, and this is a very hefty and very hard definition to understand. I would break it down, something simple. So uh, machine learning is just fancy term for uh, curve fitting, curve fitting, mathematical curve fitting. So it is just a fancy word for curve fitting. Machine learning is basically coded mathematics. So yeah, so AI, deep learning, uh, it's all like mathematics uh, with code. So let's try. What are the so what are some of the problems that DL tries uh, tries to solve? The vision, uh, natural language processing, reinforcement learning. There are, there are numerous problems around, and everybody's switching to uh, machine learning, deep learning. I guess you are all here to uh, jump on the board for that. Uh, so let's focus on the computer vision part of the whole uh, scenario. So why is vision important? This is something you can tell. Why is vision important? Anybody, why is vision important? Come on. It's a big part of our lives. Exactly. Uh, so like, what do, you, <coughs> what, do, what do you require vision for? Like everything, right? From like, yeah, so from driving cars to reading to uh, medical, uh, x-ray imaging, capturing, everything you require. Hand-eye coordination is, al is also an important part. So vision is almost everywhere. So uh, if you're trying to make an AI, like some, uh, if you're trying to create a robot, vision would be an important part of that. So, the, so what are the different tasks in vision? How do we define what are the different problems in computer vision itself? So computers, uh, computer vision is a very broad topic. So there are three major tasks, classification, uh, detection, and instance segmentation. So this is uh, like very visual here. Classification is just you see an object and you need to determine whether the object is A or B. That is classification. Then there's classification plus localization. You have to tell whether an object is A or B, and you have to tell where in the picture is the object itself. That is classification plus localization. That comes under detection. Then there's object detection. Now you have multiple ob objects, and you need to determine uh, the position of every object, and you have to tell what the object is. And then we have instance segmentation. This is like how humans perceive everything. So instance segmentation, I can 
uh, focus any part of this room with my eyes. That, that, how, uh, that is how advanced our vision is. I can uh, uh, focus there and blur everything out uh, like in my, in my vision. So that is the epitome of uh, problems. Like uh, instant segmentation is the highest, uh, like the best problem that we need to crack in uh, computer vision. So we, ha we have tried to copy how our eyes work. So there was a famous, uh, there, there, there were, uh, so there, there is may, many difficulties in uh, computer vision. First of all, computer do, uh, doesn't understand uh, like how we perceive images. It only understands binary, one, zero, one, zero. So we have to break it into pixel numbers. Uh, how, somehow we have to con convert it into pixels. Then there are uh, a lot of, uh, Problems like we require a lot of computation because we need to convert the images to pixel. Big, big, like the uh, like the bigger the images get, the more the computation is we require. Uh, like we require, the so stat uh, statistical models, like the models uh, which we were used before, were very inefficient. So attempts were done before. So if you guys know about decision trees, SVM kernels, these are all the like uh, everybody tried to solve vision, but it was not very efficient. And uh, for, uh, for, for, for many, uh, many years, uh, computer vision was literally way, uh, was not producing good results. Uh, so how do you uh, quantify the computer vision results? We do a lot of competitions in uh, uh, deep learning itself. So there's a very famous competition called ImageNet. Uh, how many of you have heard about ImageNet? Great. So, ImageNet is a, a large-scale competition held an annually, and you have uh, like 1.5 uh, million uh, images or 15 million images uh, of different categories. There are 21,000 uh, 21, different categories. So, every every year, a lot of companies, a lot of deep learning companies, try to uh, get. Uh, uh, like good positions uh, in this uh, competition. So there was there was this result, and you can see uh, in 2012 the error rate dropped significantly. So you can see so, uh, it just uh, bottled down. So what, what happened in 2012? So the answer is convolution neural networks. So somebody uh, like Alex uh, <laughs> Alex came out with this uh, uh, new model called Convets, AlexNet basically, and uh, it just sh shattered the competition. And, uh, it was a big, uh, a big event. Time, the Time Magazine covered it, and everybody was like, "Oh yeah, we saw AI and everything like that." So before before getting into Convets, I, uh, I asked you that uh, many of you were trying to get into machine learning. So I'll tell you from the start. So here I. Like, here's the link, and you can go to the link and uh, run the code. So you can go and check uh, check this out. It, it, it works in the Google Colab, so. You don't need to set up anything, it, it just runs. I will show the code.
discuss this, like uh, structure, structural basis, there are only few fundamentals uh, of machine learning models. So you have your big data that is also available with you. Then you have to create a hypothesis function, and you have to have a function which would check the hypothesis function how well it is performing. And then you have optimizer, so you have to uh, adjust your hypothesis function so that the loss would be minimized. So it's a, like, it's a work of three functions basically. Every model is a work of three functions there. So like if you to code, uh, you have in logistic regression. So what is logistic regression? Logistic regression is a fundamental classification model that everybody like is, uh, is modeled, uh, you get introduced to when you uh, enter in the field of machine learning. So logistic regression is that model. Uh, uh, it's a basic uh, model for classification. It's, it does uh, binary classification. So you, uh, like I showed you, there's, there's this code, linear classification code, and you can basically go there. So this is the, the sigmoid function is basically the loss function here. I told you about three functions, right? I introduced here. So this is the loss function, here, <coughs> sigmoid function. Then you have your hypothesis function. This is linear classifier. It has all the weights here, so you can see weights and bias. These are the weights that you need to adjust the parameters, and then you have your uh, is the loss. You can so it takes the output from sigmoid functions and compare what the loss is, and then you have gradient. Gradient uh, gradient uh, descent is the uh, is your uh, optimizer. Yeah. So through the gradient descent, you. Uh, it's just the parameters. That is how you learn. So you need to, uh, like, you need, you need to know your loss, and then you can adjust the parameters somehow that it, uh, fit, like, the curve fits the data. So I'll, I'll explain it in more depth. So this is uh, uh, from logistic uh, regression. So forward propagation here. Forward propagation is. So we are inputting the training uh, train data here and train labels and uh, and we have the uh, random weights initialized uh, weights are initialized randomly here and then we have uh, you know, we input some random numbers then we uh, take out the loss then we calculate the gradient and then we uh, basically. Uh, then we adjust the uh, random ways we introduce first. So somehow it's like uh, fitting an equation, uh, but by through the code. So uh, th then I just so we did uh, power pro propagation. We did gradients. This stuff is boring. Yeah, you, like okay, you are here for deep learning, right? So deep neural network. This is an interesting part. So, what, what what are deep uh, deep neural networks? So they, they also have those three fundamental concepts: softmax, ReLU. These are your uh, loss loss functions basically. Then you have con uh, concept of layers, forward propagation, back propagation. I would be explaining it. So, concept of nonlinearity. So concept of nonlinearity is the data you get from the world is not linear. Linear in the sense like. Uh, if uh, not all the data progresses in one, two, three fashion, it goes from one, five, ten. Sometimes it goes one, five, twenty-five. I'm just uh, telling you uh, uh, in the form of stream of number if you get the data. So data is not always linear. You get uh, non-linear data, and to fit non-linear data or to uh, get an equation which traces non-linear data, you need to have some non-linearity in your models. So how do we get that non-linearity? Answer is softmax. Softmax. Uh, basically, gives you non-linear uh, fashion in your model, so that you can fit non-linear data, basically. And uh, we have ReLU for non-linearity uh, concepts of forward propagation. So, for, uh, uh, forward propagation is basically the term used when your data is inserted into your uh, model. So, your data is inserted into model. You get some output. And then uh, that is your forward propagation. Then you uh, basic. Then then there is back backward propagation. So you get your data. You do the loss. You calculate the loss. What what is the loss? 
process the data that at the answer the outputs that are generated by your uh, by your model and the original answer the actual facts the answer that uh, the labels that you have so it's uh, the difference between them so the loss is how far away is your answer from the actual answer that is the loss case. so we have different loss functions to calculate that loss Why does the linear model fail? Anyone? Anyone? Exactly. So because the data that you get from the world is not linear, it's, it's non-linear. So uh, another interesting fact, uh, fact here is deep, deep neural networks basically fail, failed on the first uh, few tasks of uh, uh, like computer vision. And that is because uh, there, there, there were a lot of uh, problems, uh, and the pro problem is curse of dimensionality. So I initially I told you every image is uh, to be separated in different pixels, and we take the pixel count. So just imagine uh, you have 28 by 28, that's the height and width of a single image, right? 28 by 28 uh, size images, and how many different images can you get? from our 28 by 28 pixel images. Like permutation, combination, if anybody knows. Uh, uh, we have three values uh, for pixels, uh, RGB, right? And can be tuned somehow uh, to the, such that the three pixel values can be changed. So. If we have 28 by 28, that is 784 pixels, right? 28 into 28 is 784 pixels, and each pixel can be can have three different values, which and each value of uh, a, a RGB filter can be uh, changed from 0 to 255. So that gives us 256. So 256 into 256 into 256 into 784. That is a lot, and it's. 28 by 28 images. The, uh, the uh, images that you take from your camera are uh, that, that have a lot of pic, uh, like uh, that, that are a lot bigger than 28 by 28, right? So uh, the curse of dimensionality is the uh, images, the size of images are increasing, and you need to somehow get, com compute such big amounts of images. And deep neural networks take only pixel values and then they determine. So it's uh, unscalable at such a big uh, 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 like well. So curse of dimensionality is that because pixel size is increasing, you cannot like the dimensions are increasing. You you have to have some other ways than to just use deep neural networks because at some point it becomes infeasible. Uh, so we have convolution neural networks. So what problems do convolution neural networks solve? I, I would go for that. There are three key, three, three key points. What is special about corner? Three key points. Translation invariance, parameter sharing, and hierarchical feature training, uh, learning, sorry. Uh, so what is translation invariance? So uh, I will show you this. You can see there's a cat here. That is, the cat is in the center of the image, right? On the second image, cat is a bit further from the, sec, uh, from the center. But both are cats, right? And for, for your computer, it cannot understand, like, it cannot perceive what a cat is. So it, it has to go so pixel by pixel. So we need uh, we need an algorithm, and our algorithm, which somehow determines that this is a cat and that is also a cat. It's the image difference. Right. So, so that is translation invariance. Because we can have cat anywhere in the picture, and we need a model so that it can detect. Anywhere in the picture, that's okay. There's the object here, or in the corner, or in the center, or somewhere. Excuse me, much better. Let this go. Okay. Sorry. No problem. Just here. <coughs> uh, so yeah, uh, translation invariance. So uh, then we have your hierarchical features. Hierarchical features, basically, if you have a circle. Uh, uh, like 
a geometrical circle. That circle can be transformed into a tire, a, a, car, by, a bicycle's tire, car tire, or in fact, your eyes, if you can draw good. So uh, that, is a, uh, that is the thing about hierarchical features. You, you build a, a thing from ground up. So you can uh, take a circle and you can draw a tire around it uh, or you can draw eyelashes around it and it, it becomes a uh, uh, eye, right? So these are hierarchical features. You, you start from the basic structures, triangles, uh, circles, cylinders, and then you try to combine it in such a way uh, that it, it turns out uh, into something perceivable or something uh, that you can call uh, human or, uh, or car. So th that are hierarchical features, right? So uh, we need an algorithm which uh, detects uh, basic features inside the image and then tries to combine the information it gets from the image and then tries to basically uh, uh, get uh, like what the uh, object inside the image really is. So here we can see like uh, it detects very uh, crude features like lines and shapes like that uh, uh, and we come to parameter sharing. So uh, in deep neural network each pixel get, uh, gets a weight of its own. So if we have 784 pixels, we have 784 weights or parameters plus a single uh, bias. So if now, uh, now we want some uh, algorithm which basically has few, few pick, uh, like fewer uh, parameters for each image. So if we have a 28 by 28 image, we somehow uh, we don't need 784 uh, parameters, but we now need uh, some uh, somewhere around 14 into 14 uh, parameters. So that the now we have uh, less parameters, but the detection would be done quite well. So coming back to convets, uh, convets uh, now we, uh, I'll explain you how the convex do, uh, does it in real time. So they, uh, whatever I told you right now is basically image processing or feature, uh, feature learning. So what, uh, what does a convex do is it takes the image, it detects certain features and it th uh, throws back a, uh, like uh, an array of particular numbers and that we call as features extracted from the image. Now these features go into your logistic regression. Remember that was the basic, uh, basic uh, fundamental model of machine learning. So coordinates are nothing but feature learning uh, 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 models. So th these learn the features. It throws out some features, and then you get uh, a feature array, which would be processed by some kind of classifier at the end. So a dissection of coordinates. So coordinates has uh, small boxes or parameters or, fi or filters which are shared all over. So that is how you do parameter sharing. And then you have strides, strides like uh, each. Uh, uh, let me show you. So if you assume this is an image, right? So if you assume that is, uh, that, uh, that is an image and the yellow box is a parameter box and it is uh, uh, con basically uh, multiplying every uh, digit in, in, in the red inside the yellow box and uh, throwing the sum of all the uh, multiples inside a single box. So that, uh, that is how a convolution works. So uh, a parameter box is strided over every part of the image. You get a, 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 a sum of uh, products and uh, it gets uh, fed into next uh, part of the image. And then you have pooling layers. Pooling layers is basically something that uh, you basically uh, com compress the image. So you take four pixels, you compress it and create a single pixel. Uh, so th that is how a pooling works. You take four pixels from an image, you com compress them. Now it's on you to how, how to compress them. You take four pixels and take the highest uh, amount of uh, number we get in that uh, uh, four pixels and we take it into the next uh, part of the image. So we get uh, from 1156, we take the sixth part of the, uh, uh, like sixth number from the image and f uh, feed it forward. So we have non-linearities uh, because uh, data is not linear in the sense because non-linearities is basically every, required everywhere because data is no, not linear. So we have to, for fighting non-linearities, uh, we have these uh, special functions. Uh, 
uh, the rest of the net is regular, like regular in the sense I told you you can use logistic regression, SVMs, decision trees and everything like that. So ConNet is basically image processing but uh, it's fancy image processing and then you have rest, uh, rest of the, your, rest of your uh, uh, networks remains, remains the same like your uh, logistic regression, SVM or anything like that. So uh, let's get to a cool visualization. I have it here. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, how do I show you? Oh. Uh, so you take uh, and feed an input. So I I, I draw two here, and it, it it is an input basically, right? Then uh, there's this convolution uh, layer here. So it tries to extract some features out of the image. So this is the first layer. Then you have down sampling. That is the pooling part I told you about. So it uh, so you can see the image gets. Compressed here, so th there was uh, the image was larger, but now it is compressed here. And then we have another con convolution layer. It does the same thing. It strides the parameters over and over again and tries to learn few different features, which are uh, important. And then you uh, you get another downsampling. Uh, you get another. Uh, you get fully connected layers. Just to uh, uh, these are your uh, like logistic regression basically so fully connected layers are basically uh, your uh, regular new, uh, deep deep networks so and then you have fully connected layer number 2 and then finally there's an output and output is uh, 2 so all this work just to classify digits so uh, like i can draw 7 okay Seven. Uh, 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 I'll, I'll just distribute the link of this uh, demo so you can check it out yourself. And I then have a, a, a implementation in Keras in here of a convolution network. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's running. So uh, so this was the image that uh, I fed the model and model is compiling it's all done in the re, uh, in real time so this is the model con layer pooling the pooling is down sampling basically uh, you have total parameters of 93 322 uh, parameters and it's training right now so let uh, let it train for a few minutes and so uh, so uh, like I can tell you about the uh, models that won the competition, the competition I started initially with ImageNet. So this, this is the 2012 winner which did the wonders in the field of uh, 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 computer vision. So this is AlexNet, it, bro it broke the record. And uh, by the way, current uh, record is held by uh, a, com a company in some, somewhere in China and uh, that, com uh, that company basically brought down the error level to 1.3 percent. So if, uh, and the human error is somewhere around 5 percent. So that, that makes if a human is uh, given 100 images, the human would uh, classify five Im images wrong, but the model does it only a single time. So the, we have beaten the uh, human uh, uh, vision in the field of classification for now. This is so f good for 
uh, coming years. So this, so you can see uh, the trend. Uh, here the layers are less. Then the next winner, the layers are more. And in 2015, the layers are basically a lot. So people are just stacking layers by layers and layers and layers uh, to just get to that uh, point where they bre break the record. So uh, yeah, so from a single talk, you can basically uh, understand the the, uh, the architectures because they are just uh, uh, like stacking the layers again and again. So you can just uh, understand a single concept and you can uh, understand a, a lot of models, right? So uh, yeah, so barrier of entrance is very low, but the race to go forward is a lot. So that is why you need the theory to understand it. Uh, and yeah, so that's about it. Thank you for your attention. And uh, any questions you, may, uh, you might want to ask? Okay, so we have time for questions. Three, two. Are there any questions? Uh, no questions. Huh. Yes. Just I want to learn. I work. I work a little bit from uh, about uh, about about computation. Yeah. And I'm interested. Why you? What always we choose to? For example, 250, 250 seats for, for um, by the number of kernel. Uh, you want to know why we only choose yes. to 0 to 256? Yeah, yes, but from Alex Knight to, to Riz Knight, we, we always chose 250 seats and then 100, 128, but I don't know why. So why do we use the filter like 256 and then 128? So basically it is for better processing, uh, better processing in the sense that it gets uh, better results like that. So the, uh, if you have unregular images like uh, images of uh, different dimension, it would work, but it would work uh, uh, differently. So the, uh, Andrew NG uh, basically to told about this, uh, so he was, he was like a, uh, talking about this, uh, why, why do we use uh, different size of images? So that was because of the processing inside the computer because it makes makes the model work efficiently. So that that was something that that was dis discovered after a lot feeding a lot of di uh, unsimilar images, and then they come uh, they came to the. Uh, result that 256 by 256 images work well. You can use three, 318 by 318 uh, also, 318 by 318. And uh, yeah, so it's basically uh, something that the people follow as a trend. So yeah, so it's uh, it's not, not a hard and fast rule or something like that, because you can always resize your image to 256 or and you can go from that. Uh, Actually, I have a question about the standard architecture that you showed us here, okay. uh, BGG or Alexa. Okay. Uh, I have a question if, uh, if I understood well that this type of architectures take as input the standard image. Yeah. That means, for example, for this Alexnet, it is 227 pixels. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So what if we have, let's say, 200 pixels, or maybe by 200? So you can... Uh, okay. uh, the <laughs> Um, Can you repeat the questions on the video? So the, uh, okay, so the question was, uh, if we have a different size of image uh, that would, uh, that we want to feed into the Alex net or some standard nets, uh, uh, so how do we do that? Am I right? Yeah, I mean, there, maybe there's two things to do. Uh, it's either we, we, uh, we reshape the image. Yeah. In this case, we'll do some information, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you, uh, what you can do if the image is uh, smaller, like 200 by 200 pixel image. So what we can do is we can uh, do a padding. That's zero padding. So we can just put a border around the image, and the uh, model ignores the border because it doesn't know what the what the border is. So it just ignores that. So we can put a uh, like a 227. So we can uh, put a 27 pixel border around the image. Uh, so that we can feed 227 by 227 image, but it, it would be carrying zero paddings around the image. 
So it is done on the image itself, not on the architecture. Let's say 200 pixels. Yeah, so we, uh, we so take... It's smaller, so if you apply, it, uh, you apply a border, it will be much more smaller. It will also fit to, to the model. No, uh, you have a 200 by 200 uh, pixel image, right? Yeah. Then I, uh, then uh, what I do is, to make it 227, I apply 27 pixel uh, okay. zero padding. Okay, so, so, the, uh, uh, so for those 27 pixels, uh, the pixel amount would be zero. So it would be black, uh, like for you, and for the computer it would be uh, like a redundant information. So it would leave the that part, and it would focus on the uh, image part. And, uh, okay, this is clear. Thanks. And in the case of the image, the image is much more bigger. That's much more bigger. So, so you can stride. Basically, you can take different parts of image. Okay. Uh, so we can. Uh, uh, what we can do is we can create 227 by 227 window, and then we can stride over the window to find uh, to de detect the object. It's it's the same. Uh, of yeah, so uh, that, that is uh, that is what uh, it is done in uh, 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 object uh, localization and detection techniques. We use this because uh, you uh, you have seen like uh, self-driving cars, right? Yeah. So self-driving cars have basically no pixel amount. Like they, they don't have standard value, so they scan everything window by window, and that is done very fast. So you uh, so when when uh, when there's somebody in front of a car, self-driving car, so it scans the whole whole thing, uh, window by window, and just then it detects. So uh, 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 the, I can tell you about it, but it would get a lot a lot yeah, longer. Question. Yeah. So actually, in, in order to choose one architecture, I mean. When you choose how they say for PGG, for example, does it depend on the, the, the let's say, the, the image itself, how many pixels uh, it has? Or so it has, uh, uh, like, so, okay, <laughs> no problem. So the question was, uh, how do we choose a particular net, uh, uh, New, uh, like network for for a task, right? So it is not dependent on the image. It is it is dependent on the task. So for object or uh, object de detection and classification, the usual go-to model is VGG because it is much simpler to understand. Uh, and uh, then you go to the complex models, right? Uh, like uh, resonates and, and other models. So the basic start or go-to model is VGG, and then you like uh, go to ResNet and find uh, other th other things. There, there, there are capsule networks and a lot of things. So it is like task dependent. They are not image dependent. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Here. Okay. Uh, do you have to do a regularization on your picture before you the network? Uh, so, so the question is, uh, do I have to do regularization uh, regularization on the image or? Uh, in, inside the continent? Is it a part of the continent or do you have to do it before? Uh, so the question is, uh, how do we regularize the uh, uh, convolution neural network, right? So co like I told you, convolution neural network is basically feature engineering. The regularization part comes in the classification. So you can use, uh, you can use your dropouts and uh, uh, L2 regularization. There are few regularization techniques that are done in the classification part. You don't necessarily do anything inside the continent. There's, there's one uh, paper, uh, like there's one technique called batch normalization, which we do inside the convolution neural networks. But that would uh, uh, basic uh, that's a uh, different part uh, so we uh, sometimes we leave batch normalization because it does uh, like it does regularize uh, regularize regularize the thing but we can uh, uh, get away with dro using heavy dropouts at the end uh, and uh, it just works uh, yeah thank you for the question huh? Uh, sorry, again. Okay. While you are training a network, yeah. do you fix the hyperparameter such as the number of epochs? So number of epochs? Yeah. So uh, the question is how do we uh, choose hy a few hyperparameters, like number of epochs and uh, things like that. So again, it is task dependent. 
Uh, you you uh, take, uh, uh, you start with 10 or 20 epochs, or whatever works fine, and, le and then you see if it is overfitting or not. If it is not overfitting, you generally run for a few more epochs. It, uh, it is basically hit and trial, the hyperparameters like epochs and uh, uh, your learning rate and all, these are hit and trials. Uh, but uh, since, we, uh, since a lot of people are doing uh, uh, deep learning right now, so there are a few uh, standard hyperparameters. So for learning rate, there are for Adam or for uh, any other optimizer, you can get a particular. Uh, you can search for the best star, uh, like go to uh, go to uh, your go to uh, value for a particular hyperparameter. But I would ge generally suggest like go for five to ten epochs, then check your uh, curve validation testing curve, and if it is overfitting, then you. Uh, might uh, start from the and reduce the epochs. That that is how you work. Thank you for the question. Uh, any other question? Yeah. Uh, can you, if, if it's possible, to go back to the question uh, where you draw a number? Just a minute. Yeah, this one? Uh, just an experiment. Yeah, okay. Work. If you draw the same number, but in the lower corner, not in the center, but uh, the smaller one, yes. Uh, you see, so it, it actually is how it works. First guess is two. First guess is two, second guess is one. So it is outputting two with a higher probability, even though it is in the left corner. My question is actually, so basically what you presented was the um, classification problem. Yeah, this is classification. Now, if, if we are passing to the detection, uh, because it's not quite the same, what, what exactly do you add in order to um, introduce the detection part into your classification part? So uh, that is something uh, off from the topic, but I know. So I, as the first, the question was, how do we, uh, what, what, uh, what are the things we do for uh, detect, uh, detecting a particular uh, uh, object in the image, right? From here, in the uh, what, uh, in addition to the yeah, in addition to classification, what the uh, what are the different techniques that we do yes. for detection, right? Yes. So, so one part one part is like you use anchor windows, window techniques that that, that I told uh, to the gentleman in the front seat. So, so you do classification for window. What? So you, you you split the image into windows and you Ex exactly. So we uh, we take anchor anchor points. So they are uh, they are like. We select hyper uh, para like uh, anchor windows are a hyper parameter. So you uh, take rectangular boxes over uh, 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 like a lot of rectangular boxes over the image, and uh, so there are like 20 rectangular box over the image such that they cover every part of the image, and you feed it to the convolution network in in a in a parallel fashion so everything gets cropped and fed inside uh, inside 20 diff so if you have 20 uh, 20 windows so it goes into to, uh, in, inside the convolution neural network and it detects uh, 20 different windows as a as new images basically so uh, if you draw a lot of boxes here somehow uh, there would be a box which would get the major part of two not the entire entire number two, but the major part of two, and then it would try to uh, lo localize. So that box becomes the local part where, the, where your, your object is. So that is what I told uh, in the starting. Object detection is somewhat good. Instant segmentation. Instant segmentation was like if I have two, so I get a pro uh, proper pixel by pixel uh, identification and that is the epitome of the problems we face in computer vision. So that is not uh, cracked right now. People are working, there are uh, models like Ma mask RCNN, RCNN, uh, faster RCNN, and there are a lot of uh, CNNs which are trying to solve the problem you are talking about like pixel to pixel masking of a particular object, but uh, we are trying to crack, crack that. As a, people are working to crack, crack that. It is not a problem that is solved right now. But the detection part could be done, like you draw a lot of boxes, and somehow the, some uh, part of the box would tell that, okay, the two, the probability of getting two here is a, a lot more than probability getting uh, of getting a two in the upper part somewhere. 
So that is how it works. It was. Thank you for the question. Any other question? I think we're time up. Okay. But, uh, I guess if you have any more questions. Yeah, you can find me outside. The next time for lunch break. Yeah. And the talk starts again at two in all rooms. So. Thank you. Thank you.